Dear colleagues and friends, warmest greetings of solidarity to all who are present in person and virtually in this cyber launch of my latest book on the GRP and the FP peace negotiations. Thank you for accepting the invitation for you to participate in this event. I also thank the NDFP Information Office and the International Network for Philippine Studies for inviting you and for organizing and sponsoring this book launch. I am elated and thankful that the INPS has published this book. This is the ninth in the projected series of more than 30 books under the Season Reader series, with each book compiling the best of my writings and the general title and various periods of my life. I wish to give special thanks to the reviewers of the book now being launched, the political economist Pio Berasola Jr., who has been a consultant of the NDFP in peace negotiations and social and economic reforms, and the legal expert attorney Lily Cruz, who has been a legal consultant in the peace negotiations. I have read the book reviews in advance, and I assure you that these reviews shed light on the coherence and the constant and variable factors in the content of my book. Having been involved directly and indirectly in the GRP and the FP peace negotiations since the ceasefire talks in 1986, following the downfall of the Marcos fascist dictatorship, I have always tried to serve the national democratic rights and interests of the Filipino people and have worked for a just peace by addressing the roots of the, the civil war between the GRP and NDFP and striving to arrive at comprehensive agreements on social, economic, and political reforms. Each of the post-Marcos regimes from Aquino to Duterte had the uniform objective of using the peace negotiations only for a few months and not for more than a, one year as a means of paying lip service to the cause of peace, carrying out military surveillance, preserving the, the exploitative and oppressive ruling system, and trying to maneuver the NDFP into a position of capitulation. It is not true that the GRP and NDFP had devoted the entire years of 1986 to 2017, or more than three decades, to peace negotiations. Not a single post-Marcos regime ever spent a total of more than one year of attention to peace negotiations until Duterte decided to terminate these completely on November 23, 2017 and take further steps to prevent them with the escalations of uh, state terrorism and their strategic campaigns of military suppression. The National Task Force ELCAC and the Anti-Terror Act of 2020. In accordance with the diktat of U.S. imperialism, the outgoing Duterte regime and the incoming Marcos regime are hell-bent on destroying the revolutionary movement of the Filipino people through brutal campaigns of military suppression and the puerile Saiwar campaigns of slandering and persecuting all the patriotic and democratic forces and elements as communist terrorists. It is highly commendable that amidst the malevolent call for unity behind state terrorism, the International Network for Philippine Studies has published this book in order to project the possibility of resuming the peace negotiations and underscore the sincere desire of all the patriotic and democratic forces as well as the conservative opposition, religious in institutions, and human rights organizations to persevere in the demand for a just peace through negotiations and comprehensive agreements on social, economic, and political reforms. Like the NDFP, I've been constantly and consistently for peace negotiations within the framework of the Hague Joint Declaration of 1992. However, there is nothing that the NDFP can do to resume the peace negotiations if in the first place the GRP insists on carrying out an all-out war policy or engaging in sham peace negotiations that are under the complete control and surveillance of the reactionary armed forces for the purpose of choosing any time to destroy the revolutionary movement of the people and frustrate their patriotic and democratic demands and aspirations. 
It must be pointed out that the Marcos fascist dictatorship never engaged the NDLP in peace negotiations and never succeeded in destroying the revolutionary movement. Instead, this movement of the people succeeded in expanding nationwide, building the revolutionary forces among the oppressed and exploited masses, and ultimately causing the downfall of the fascist dictatorship. At present, like a senior in 1986, Marcos Jr. is lacking any moral authority for having been falsely elected to the presidency due to the transparent and fraudulent automated election system manipulated by the tyrant Marcos and his cabal in the Comelec. Marcos Jr. is also confronted by an economic, social and political crisis far worse than that faced by the senior in 1986. He is destined to fall in an ignominy if, like a senior, he knows nothing better than to enlarge his family's ill-gotten wealth, further plunder the Philippines, and butcher the Filipino people. He ought to know that the outgoing Duterte regime has aggravated the basic problems of foreign monopoly capitalism, domestic feudalism, and bureaucrat capitalism. He has failed to destroy the revolutionary movement and is passing to the Marcos, the second regime, a ruling system that is in extreme crisis. Marcos Jr. can dream about having a second chance of his dynasty to destroy the revolutionary movement, but he ought to remember that this movement is now much bigger and stronger than when Marcos Sr. failed to destroy it. The people want revolutionary change. They have had more than enough of the treason, butchery, corruption, and demagoguery inflicted on them by the reactionary puppets of the imperialist and local exploiting classes. They are outraged that the worst political dynasties, the Marcoses and Dutertes, have combined to usurp political authority through automated cheating in the elections and offer nothing but their schemes of fascism and plunder in the service of their imperialist masters and their big comprador landlord, bureaucrat capitalist interest.